What is going on guys? Look at me here and today we we're requested to play the Cougar and the F-56 or the M-56? The Scorpion, but I don't have the Scorpion yet, so I figured I'd hit the Cougar up. Now this is something, it's it's a good plane. Don't get me wrong, it's a good jet. Is it matched the BR? It can fight well in it. It's fine. This is stock in this video, so I will be doing more videos when it comes closer to spaded and when it is spaded, obviously. I like this plane a lot. Excuse me, I have to clear my throat. Whenever I drink coffee in the morning and do commentaries, I always get like hiccups and stuff. Very weird. Now, there are a couple interesting features of this plane. One, the wing, how the wings look. Uh, two, the ailerons are called spoilers, I believe, and they work a little different than normal ailerons. Pretty dang. So if you're going to turn left, like the left aileron or spoiler would pop up, which creates more drag on the left wing, therefore rolling the aircraft. It's cool. It's very cool. Now, uh, this plane is not the fastest at this BR by any stretch of the imagination. It's not the best climber at this BR. It doesn't have the best firepower. But overall, it's a very good plane, and you can use some of its skills uh, to really, really diddle opponents. What are those skills? Like, well, you have 420s, which are great. If you have to go head on, Everything but a hunter, you can go head on with. If you, that's what top tier jet combat really boils down to. Is a lot of people who don't really know what they're doing going head on. It's, it's a lot of fun. I really love it. Uh, and then it's really, really good at turning at around 600 to 700 kph. It is insanely good at turning and rolling. In that speed, like brackets, in those speed brackets, it is. I would say maybe the most maneuverable plane uh, altogether. It still doesn't roll as well as, as the Sabre, but it like turns and rolls really well, and it's just fantastic at that at that speed. You know, uh, it's really good. Now the biggest issue with this plane is getting speed and keeping it because it dumps speed so fast. It will just drop speed and turns. It will dump it super super quick. Now. The reason I'm showing this gameplay is because it shows a little bit of everything that you're going to expect in top tier games when you're playing this play. You're going to expect a lot of TU4s who are going to try to win the game immediately. You're going to run into a lot of people who try to go head on immediately. And, uh, you know, I don't kill any uh, other 9.0 jets. That's a spoiler alert. But it's still fine. You'll still get the hang of the plane. And uh, the opening sequence with that reversal was pretty ridiculous. It shows what you can do with this plane if you use the proper mechanics. So a lot of things that happen are you'll climb. You won't have any airspeed. Then you finally start to get your airspeed up. You start to get your airspeed up. And then you get attacked. And you have to turn. And then you dump airspeed. And before you know it, you're traveling around 400 kph below all the enemies. And you can't really do anything. And you're scrambling to get altitude. But you're also scrambling to get speed and you don't know what to do try not to do that what you want to do is take vertical slashes at the enemies keeping your speed high but maintaining that maneuverability threshold if you start to go around 900 to 1000 kph that's fine but don't start to turn because this plane compresses like nobody's business if you're over 800 you will compress harder than any plane in the game i kid you not it is ridiculous the maneuverability gap between when you're traveling at high speeds compared to its like threshold or like where you want to be it it gets hit like a try turns into a semi it's worse than a b29 at turning when it gets up high like high speeds um and you know just you got you can use the speed my best advice is use the speed to get around the map to catch enemies but when you really get into an engagement you want to bleed the enemy speed until they're around the same as you in your 600 to 700 and then you just out turn them out maneuver them get your shots and then dip out it's not really a plane that can carry the game in my opinion just because of the engine now when it's spaded it might be a different plane i have no idea boosters and stuff might help this plane under the deal with the compression but it just gets so beat down at high speeds and it can go fast i've almost caught hunters stop this thing can go around 1,050 stock. And uh, I mean, obviously that's coming out of a steep dive, but still it can go fast. It's not like 
it's not going to rip or anything, but it just gets so compressed. So you got to really be careful with that. If you're going to dive after planes going super high speeds, just remember you're not going to be able to pull out of it and you might get reversed on. In all honesty, if you pass through a guy super fast, uh, you know, you pass a guy going however fast a thousand or whatever you're going and um, you can't pull out of it or you can't really maneuver, a plane that's going equally as fast can just whoop and shoot you. Now you see here, a 163 tries to go head on with me. I win that and he hits me, which is pretty crazy. This thing's damage model is pretty interesting. It's kind of durable, truth be told. I've, I've taken a lot of shots, but the problem with it is if one of the spoilers gets hurt, the other one is stuck doing all the job, which means that, obviously that's how ailerons work too, but it's still like, it's a weird kind of feeling when only one of them works here. My aileron wasn't knocked, or my spoiler wasn't knocked out, but the right wing was hurt, so I was leaning to the left. I had more drag on it, or to the right. It was weird, weird flight model. I don't think these flight models work 100% how they should. I mean, you saw how I hit that 163. But you see, you see a lot of this in top tier games. You'll see a lot of people who, like the 163, like, you don't want to go head on in a 163 if you're the pilot of a 163, especially against four American 20s. It's just not, it's not what you want to do. Uh, sure, even if he traded with me, it would have, I mean, the 163 has so much more potential than just going head on with a guy and losing. So you see that a lot. Don't, don't, I, I, I get head on. The only plane in this game that should probably go head on almost every time it sees it is the hunter just because those 30s are so high such high velocity so powerful they reach their target really fast the hunter can do that it can get away with it all day but every other plane at this br it's like why are you going head on stop just stop just play the game just get in a dog fight let's do that i don't want to trade so again let's recap it's really good at turning at around 600 to 700 really good at rolling at 600 700 it compresses super hard be careful for enemy players because they're all going to want to go head on with you the stock guns are garbage i've been told i said it was the belts but i was wrong it's the guns the spread on the guns and stuff like that i guess they make it garbage so upgraded guns is probably one of the first things you want to go for landing on a carrier with this thing is super easy i don't show it in this but i have not screwed up a carrier landing aside from the one time that uh, the carriers start to glitch this patch. I don't know what the fuck is up with that. But when you go in for the approach, the carrier will go left, right. So, I mean, be careful for that. Obviously, you can't account for it. You don't know if it's going to happen or not. But uh, other than that, it's really easy to land on carriers. And it's faster because you'll catch the carrier's hook. You'll be repairing a lot quicker. So if you know how to land on carriers, uh, my advice is this plane can handle gear coming at it around 400. Just hit this TU4. I don't know how he didn't kill me. <laughs> in all honesty, it's the first time a TU4 hasn't killed me. So, when you're coming in for the approach on the carrier, cut throttle, hit the air brake to you're around 400, pull back. When you start to drop below 400 kph, put the gear out, put the landing flaps out. You want to hit the deck at around 250 with the tail down, and you'll catch the hook and it'll stop you. And I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. It's a lot easier. If you're having trouble landing this thing on a carrier, just test it. Do fly test mode and keep landing on a carrier. Because when you're in a game on like Hokkaido or something, it's a lot easier to just hit the carrier real quick. You'll land fast and, um, you know, it'll be easier than hitting the runway and gliding down the runway for however long. It takes, it'll take like about a full minute almost to land, repair and stuff when you hit the ground uh, with a good crew. If you're landing on a normal runway, when you can take like 20 seconds or less on a carrier. So yeah, that's my advice. That's how I feel about the Cougar. I like the plane. I've been enjoying it a lot. I'm going to be playing it a lot. Super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. I have a T62 video coming out later on today, so stay tuned for that. Uh, that that tank is pretty pretty dope. I like that tank a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment down below with what plane I should fly next. I know there's a couple new planes this patch. I'm grinding for the Brigand uh, B1. I know there's like the Blumen Voss and something else. I don't have those, but I can get them if I want. And yeah, just leave a comment down below. Let me know. Maybe you want to see the Hunter. I haven't flown the Hunter in quite some time. Again, thank you guys. Again, 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 again. Uh, the subscriber count and stuff is just going off the chain. We're almost at 17,000 and a half subscribers, which is just bonkers. So I'll see you guys in the next one.
Peace.